for you I've come to tell you a story that's true A story about a special man that I knew The Son of God has come The Son of God has come I'm a witness I'm a witness When God came to me Live here is Jesus My carpenter friend I'll tell you the story Beginning to end The Son of God's come The Son of God's come And I'm a witness I'm a witness My name is Peter. I'm an apostle. Now maybe I don't look much like an apostle to you. Well, that's because I'm a fisherman by trade. Just a plain man, I guess you'd say, but hey, I haven't come to talk about myself. Listen to me. This is for you. I've come to tell you a story that's true. What I have witnessed, I'm telling to you. The sun is dark. My carpenter friend I'll tell you the story Beginning to end The sun God's come The sun God's come And I'm a witness This is the way it began. Jesus' mother, Mary, was a devout young Jewish virgin who was visited by the angel Gabriel. He told her that she was blessed above all women because she was chosen to be the mother of God's Son, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. I guess you could say she was the first New Testament believer because she obeyed God and risked losing her reputation her family, and the love of the man she was to marry. Hey, it took incredible faith and courage to do what she did. But the angel also had a talk with Joseph, her husband-to-be. And he believed, too, and married this lovely girl who was already with child by the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he was baptized by John and filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he began his ministry. He came into our little town to teach and turned our lives upside down. Nothing ever happens here in Galilee. You just follow in the footsteps of your a fisherman like people say you're meant to be Go down to the boat, throw your net in the sea Take your turn at the oar, hoist the sail, mend the net Clean the fish, cut
up the bait. Da da dum, da da dee. Whoa, nothing ever happens to me. Nothing ever happens here to me anymore. Every day's exactly like the day before. You're just waiting, but you don't know what you're waiting for. You know in your soul that there's got to be more. Whoa, nothing ever happens to me. Then Jesus came, and all of our lives were Now, when Jesus said, follow me, he wasn't calling us to an easy life. Becoming fishers of men called for life-changing commitments from us and from our families. When I wore my bridal veil and wedding gown, I said my vows and dreamed of how we'd settle down. Of course I thought my husband ought to stick around But now it seems that the man of my dreams is always out of town Well, I guess I married a German man But I met Jesus, so I understand that when Follow him anywhere, anywhere. When you find the truth, you'll follow him anywhere. I thought he'd come straight home from fishing every day, but sometimes the way of God is not a woman's way My mother rolls her eyes and softly sighs Oive And wonders how I'll be able to smile Each time he goes away Well, I guess I married a traveling man But I've met Jesus I understand that when you find the truth, you'll follow him anywhere. When you find the truth, you will follow him anywhere. 
Even when the other brothers and I started traveling with Jesus, we didn't yet realize what he really was, or the extent of the power of God on his life. But our eyes began to open when we went with him to a wedding in Canaan. It was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen, up to that point. They had run out of wine, and the host was about to be terribly embarrassed. Jesus' mother, Mary, brought the servants to him and said to him, Do whatever he tells you. Then she just walked away, confident that he could solve the problem. Well, he had the servants fill six stone water jars with water, and then draw some of it out and take it off to the steward. It had miraculously been turned into very good wine. Nobody, nobody would have dreamed he could do that, except his mother, this woman. What an impact she had on my life. If you want to know how to find favor with God, you can't find a better example than this lady. She knows the way. How did I arrive? How did I come to be? The one he chose to bless out of all What secret do I know? What wonders have I done to move the one from whom all blessings flow? Just these words, they're all I have to give. Just these words, they are the saw him turn water to wine, heal the sick, the blind, the deaf, cast out demons. But not only were the things Jesus did marvelous, the things he said were staggering. Listen to some of his words about himself. The Father and I are one. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Hey, is it any wonder the religious leaders came to hate him? He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Whoever hears my words and puts his trust in him who sent me has everlasting life. He will not be judged, but has already passed from death to life. And he talked about being born again. 
Unless a man is born again, he said, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, how can a man be born again? But you know, Jesus was talking about our spirits being given birth by God's Spirit when we believe in His Son. Tell me how the wind blows Tell me where the wind goes You hear it singing through the sky You can't see what you feel What kind of a man was this Jesus that he would dare to offer people a new birth? We'd walked with him, we'd seen miracles and heard wonders, but we got our first understanding of who we were really dealing with when a poor widow's only son died. Jesus had compassion on her and simply walked in and raised him from the dead.
He was more than a good man, or a teacher, or even a prophet. We saw that this man had life in himself, and he could give it to anyone he chose. We were witnessing something that nobody had ever seen before, and we were just beginning to understand. said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We had so much to learn from Jesus. Sometimes it's great to learn your lessons secondhand and not have to take all the lumps yourself. And I learned one of my many lessons about the kingdom of God through those two wonderful brothers, James and John, the sons of thunder, Jesus called them, and their mother, who decided to act as their agent. Just tell me why. 
what they'll need to wear, I'll be happy to sew for my boys. Oh, I can see them making decisions, looking noble and wise. And in a pinch, if things get busy, I could help advise my boys. Oh, I can see they'll be the ones who will get the job done. Taking control, giving commands, tell me who has. Well, after, after Jesus had set them straight, he began to teach all of us what it takes to be a great man in the kingdom of God. He said, among the heathen, the kings are tyrants, and each minor official lords it over those beneath them. But among you, it's quite different. Anyone wanting to be a leader among you must be your servant. And if you want to be right at the top, you must serve like a slave. Your attitude must be like my own, for I, the Messiah, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Lord, make me like you. Please make me like you. You are a servant. As the time for the Passover came near, the people of Jerusalem saw Jesus, this miracle-working rabbi, come into the city humbly riding a young donkey. branches and flowers in front of them and, and many of them even paved the roadway with their own coats. They went wild.
fickle Jerusalem, how she loved him that day. The people were determined to make him their king, but Jesus knew that it wasn't yet time for him to be king. That God's plan for him just then wasn't rulership, but death. He tried to make us understand, but we just couldn't grasp it. As we shared our last supper with him, he tried to show us what his coming death was really all about. A sacrifice for the sins of the world. Of course, the leaders of the Jews didn't understand God's plan either. They wanted Jesus out of the way. Not only because he exposed their hypocrisy, but because they were afraid the people really would make him king, and in doing that, bring the wrath of Rome down on the whole nation. Well, how do you get rid of a popular hero? With money, of course. You hire false witnesses to testify against him, then you arrest him quietly at night through the betrayal of a greedy friend. In the Garden of Gethsemane, where we had gone with Jesus to pray, Judas came, bringing the religious leaders and Roman soldiers to arrest him. We couldn't believe it was happening. Frankly, we panicked. Some of us ran. I, I actually denied knowing him. It was the blackest moment of my life. I couldn't imagine that he could ever forgive me. And then when they had tried him, they, they condemned him to death. Judas was desperate with remorse and tried to undo what he had done. He, he went back to the elders and the priests and threw the betrayal money down at their feet. Here is the money you paid for my kiss. I must have been out of my mind. See, I have sold you an innocent man and you knew it all of the time. Silver and gold I gave in exchange for my soul.
was nothing Judas could do to change anything, and he knew it. So he went out and killed himself. There was nothing any of us could do but stand and weep and watch them put Jesus of Nazareth to death. From the place of his trial, they marched him slowly through the streets where he had ridden in triumph only a few days before. This time, the king of the Jews wore a crown of twisted thorns and staggered under a heavy cross to a hill called the Place of the Skull. And there they crucified the Son of God. Nobody ran away this time. We were all there watching. The disciples, the women, and his mother. bowed his head, gave up the ghost, and we watched the blood run down his broken body, and we began to understand the meaning of the bread and the wine. We realized that he didn't have to go through any of this. God had laid upon him the sins of the whole world, and he'd gone as quietly as a lamb to be sacrificed. We were watching the greatest act of love, the world is ever known.
He came in peace to bring release from our pain. He came with joy to bring us rest in our weariness. He came in love to bring us beauty again. They took him down. His poor dead body prepared him for his burial. They took him down, his poor pale body, drained of life, ashen and stained with its own life blood. His healing hands now pierced and still. Serving hands that broke five loaves to feed five thousand. Holy hands often folded in fervent prayer. Poor, gentle hands, now pierced and still. His poor, torn feet, now bloodied and cold. Feet that walked weary miles to bring good news to broken hearts. Feet once washed in penitence tears. Poor, torn feet, now bloody and cold. His kingly head made for a crown, now crowned with thorns. His poor kingly head crowned with thorns. His gentle breast now pierced by spear thrust, quiet and still. His poor loving breast his piercing eyes now dark and blind. Eyes of compassion, warming the soul. Fiery eyes, burning at sin. Tender eyes, beckoning sinners. His piercing eyes now dark and blind. His matchless voice, fountain of the Father's thoughts stopped and stilled to speak no more. Silence now, where once it flowed wisdom and comfort, spirit and life. His matchless voice stilled to speak no more. They took him down, his poor dead body, and prepared him for his burial. So we buried him, and we thought that was the end. But it was only the beginning.
alive and we, we had him back with us. We were beside ourselves with joy. This was, this was going to change the whole world. Except that it seemed he wasn't planning on staying. He was going to leave and transfer all the power and all the responsibility for preaching his gospel to us. The shepherd was leaving and he left the flock in our care. If you'd failed him the way I had, how would you have felt when he said, Peter, do you love me? If you love me, feed my sheep. I love you, Lord. And you know I always meant to do things right I love you, Lord When I think of how I failed you, I could cry And when I hear you calling me, I want to run and hide Yet you know I love you so I love you, Lord Although I know my heart may not seem true I love you, Lord And I prayed for one more chance To prove I do I want to leave the past behind and feel your smile again. Oh, Lord, you know, I love you so. I love you so. So if you find it in your heart to let me start again, I'll be your witness, Lord, your witness, Lord, your witness to the end of my life. Let me make it right. Let me try again. I'll be your witness to the end. To let me start again I'll be your witness, Lord Your witness, Lord Your witness to the end of my life Let me make it right Let me try again I'll be your witness to the end This same Jesus who was crucified is still both Lord and Christ, Messiah, and there is salvation in no one else. So repent and return to God so he can cleanse away your sins. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has this life, and he who does not have the Son does not have this life. So confess him as Christ and Lord of your life. Be born again and receive that life from Him. Come to the 